Sheffield Sharks. They re remain in pole position uh, in the Budweiser League. It's been a tremendous effort here at the Wembley Court tonight. The man for the Towers again, Steve Bognell, he's talking to Suzanne Dan. Thanks very much, Andrew. Well, he's just joined me. He said, I should be happy, but he's not. You best explain, Steve. Um, it's a long way to go. This is just one game. And Sheffield played tremendously. We were lucky to win in the end. They gave us all we could handle, but it's a long way to go. Plenty more games. Your defense was so strong in the first half. And what about the turnovers on Sheffield's behalf? You certainly took advantage of that, didn't you? I think, I mean, we work hard every day in practice. Trev gets us prepared, and we just go out there and do the job. Fortunately for us, Sheffield turned the ball over a little bit too much. But the coach told us that would happen, and we had to stay in there and make, that, and make the conversion. Well, you certainly did, but what stood out in this game at the, in the first half was your full-court press in that first half. You were so strong on that. Oh, we work on that every day. That's what we like to do. We have plenty of athletes that can move up and down the floor. We've got big guys that can play, and we put it to our advantage tonight. Taking a quick look at the league at the moment, you've saved yourself a little bit of breathing space, haven't you? Because now, if there is a draw, and we can wait to see, you're one all apiece now, so you've got to make sure you win that second, that third one. Yeah, definitely, we want to. They've got to come to our house. This is our house, and we're trying to prove that to everybody this year, that no one can win here, and we're doing quite well right now. Well, 30 points tonight, Steve. Congratulations. Well done. Andy. Steve, I'm well pleased. He thinks that it's all about practice. If you can hear me above all this noise here, they get very excited about that basketball. Listen, Colin, really, the Towers deserved it for the start they got in this match. I think they deserved it. They set the tempo very early in the game. Their defense intensity was up there. I think Sheffield came out a little bit like this. Didn't take care of the ball good enough, and I think that was really the difference in the game. How come the Sharks couldn't penetrate? They just couldn't get it going in the first half. The London's defensive pressure was there. Their defensive intensity was there. Their defensive rotation was there, which made it very difficult for Sheffield to get... We, we talked about Steve Bucknell and how nice it is for the Towers when he has a ball in his hand. He enjoys being a big-time player, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Buck had a great game tonight. With 1.30 left, he stretched the lead to nine points with these moves. Yeah, I mean, they, they, needed, they needed a basket desperately down the stretch. There you go, Danny Lewis and Steve Bucknell, they're back for it. They took over down the stretch. I don't know what the stat showed, but there you go. Danny kicks it over to Buck. Very taken, using up the clock because they had the lead. He sees the opening, he penetrates. He might have he, he pulled up nice, kept his balance, nice vision of the basket, and sunk to two points. That's Buckley's strongest right there. He's the only man with NBA experience currently playing in the Budweiser League. Let's take a look at the match facts. I'm sure uh, it would bear out a tower's domination in uh, several areas. Yeah, I think the thing that let Sheffield down really a lot was the three point shots. I mentioned it earlier. I even though it was 4 for 17, they had like 3 or 4 very good looks at the basket. And they just happened to miss them when they were down 8 points, they had a chance to cut it to 5. But more important than that, when you see in the second, was the turnovers. I think no matter how, forget the shooting and everything, the turnovers I think was the difference in the game. I know they ended up with... Uh, nothing in the boards, so it was turnovers. Yeah, I think they had 14 turnovers in the first half, they had 5 in the third quarter. You know, you can't play a team like London and have that many turnovers. Well, we'll talk about the bench scoring and lack of it of the Sheffield Sharks in just a moment. But Kevin Cadle, coach of the Towers, is with Suzanne Dando. Thanks, Andy. Well, Kevin, was there a moment in that fourth quarter that you started to get a little bit worried after being 17 points out and down to six? Yeah, we lost the momentum um, with about four or five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So it kind of worried me. We had a timeout, but then guys came up with big baskets. Martin came up with a big basket. Nev came with a nice post move down here. Bucknell came up with some big shots. So um, everybody picked it up those last four or five minutes of the half. We controlled the defensive backboards in the fourth quarter, and that was the difference. Well, we've spoken uh, to Steve just a minute ago, but we have mentioned quite a lot uh, uh, so far. The turnovers in the first half, plus also your full court press and the defense was absolutely outstanding. Uh, that, there's no question about that. That key to victory is, is what we did in the first half carried us over into the second half because the second half we really didn't play that well. We played really passive. Um, really slow basketball and, and it really is detrimental to our game. We need to play up-tempo basketball um, So the first half the press the press kind of bothered them We had I think 14 turnovers that we are uh, that we uh, were able to get the ball back from them in the first half We made the baskets guys stayed with it second half. We were a little bit lax a days ago But um, we got the victory. That's all we needed right now And it's just it was good that we were at home and certainly, obviously, you played as a team, and you looked good as a team, and you must be proud of the boys tonight. Yeah, yeah, I thought we did. I mean, the guards moved the ball. Um, we had a couple times where they get a little bit carried away, but 90% of the time, they came down the floor, they moved the ball, they stayed within the offense, and they created better opportunities for them. So hopefully, once we look at this film, they'll be able to see things happen better if I move the basketball than by me dribbling the ball all the time. 
Well, well done, Kevin, and well done to the boys. A good hey, game tonight. Hey, thanks a lot. Pleasure. Andy? You know, it's one all in the head-to-head -head this particular domestic season between the Sheffield Sharks and the London Towers. And Colin Irish, that could be important at the end of the year. The Towers got up for the game. They knew it was big. I mean, they could easily finish level on points the way it's going at the moment. Uh, it, it could. They could end up even on points. But the thing is, like Buck said, it's only one game. They've got a long way to go. Um, it's not like it's the end of April right now. We've still got a few months going into the season. And there's still a lot of basketball to be played in the league. But it is a step for them in, the, in that direction as far as winning the league. Jim Brandon was saying earlier on today that, you know, he feels like he's got a great squad. It's two Americans, Cawthorn and Finch. He, he likes his squad all the way down. Finch scoring zero. What's going on with that? I don't know what happened. Some of the guys needed to step up tonight, and they didn't. It was just, they seemed to have one of those games where sometimes they just couldn't, couldn't seem to do anything right. That's how basketball is. But the thing is, they concentrated. They played the same type of game in the second half, and they executed a lot better in the second half. And if they would have executed that, like that in the first half, it might have been a completely different game. You got some pretty strong words for the referees out there, Colin. Do you suppose they get tapes? I don't know. I don't really know. But, I mean, I, I think there was a couple dubious calls out there. But, that's that, again, that's basketball. If you look at the difference in the first half of a few of the calls that maybe uh, Sheffield were going to the basket and they may have thought they were getting fouled, the calls weren't being made, they were hanging their heads, London were going down shooting an easy layup at the other end. So you just got to keep playing. I mean, you, you just have, no matter how things are going, you just have to keep playing, play to the whistle. The Sharks are a team with character, and Jim Brandon is a coach with character. They'll bounce back strongly against you on Sunday, won't oh, they? Oh, they're going to be ready to play on Sunday. We're going to be ready to play on Sunday. Um, I'm sure they're going to be making all those three-pointers that they were missing tonight. I wanted London to beat up on them a little bit more. They didn't, but um, uh, we're going to be ready to go. I'm sure you will. Colin Irish, Alan Cunningham, up at Ponds Forge Centre up there in Sheffield on Sunday night, Worthing Bears against Sheffield Sharks if you're in the area. Okay, we're going to take a shake, uh, a shake, we're going to take a break now after that. We'll be looking at the growing popularity of basketball. NBA basketball with day one of the McDonald's Championship. the London Arena and day one of three of the McDonald's Championships and also the start of the coverage of basketball here on Channel 4. On tonight's show we've got this evening's games, we've also got a pocket sized guide to the rules and we hang with the homeboys, the Sheffield Sharks. But first up, a who's who and what's what of the Championships. <laughs> Tonight we've got round one action for you, Butler Bologna versus Maccabi Tel Aviv and Real Madrid versus the Sheffield Sharks. Tomorrow it's the semi-finals, the winners of tonight's games meet and then Perth Wildcats take on the NBA champs, the Houston Rockets. Saturday it's the final, live and exclusive here on Channel 4, starts at 5pm and includes highlights of the playoff matches. I know what you're thinking, basketball, tall guys to score with every shot, the last one to score wins. Wrong! You've got five guys on the court, two forwards, two guards in the centre. Player, I'm a guard. We handle the ball, set the offence and feed the forwards. Forwards, usually taller than the guards, more athletic, shoot from inside or outside the arc, or do the bulk of the scoring. I'm the center, the biggest guy on the court. We do most of the back on the inside, on defense, for the rebounds. On offense, we do most of the scoring on the inside. And what else? You've got 10 seconds to get the ball out of your end, or the back court, into your opponent's end, which is the front court. And from there, you've got 24 seconds in total to get a shot off. You score two points within the arc, and three points outside of it.
It's a non-contact sport, right? <laughs> now we're ready for some action. I'm gonna have you, you come here. <laughs> here I am, right here, kicking it in London. Yo, it's Scoop Jackson here from the United States, kicking it for the first time in London, playing ball, watching ball worldwide at the McDonald's Championship right here in London. We got Bologna, Tel Aviv, game one. Tom Chambers, Orlando Woolworths, dunking on everybody. It's so much flavor, you can't sip it. Ooh, I got to go. Bye! With Bologna sporting the fresh black uniforms and Tel Aviv adding sunshine with the yellow uniforms, the game opened with churches draining from deep. Then the battle began between Tom Chambers and Orlando Woolworths. First Chambers blocked a Woolworths dunk. Then Woolworths came back a few plays later and snatched the rebound on Chambers and dunked on anybody who got in his way. Bologna closed the lead with a few field goals from deep, then a 20-second span with Woolridge and Chambers going at each other with jump to jump. A monster jam by Woolridge. Chambers is tied. Brutamonte makes a play in between Chambers and Brutamonte, and it makes a problem. You see all of a sudden Orlando go for the big master slam. The Chamahawk by the 6'9", Orlando Woolridge, 23-17. Bologna fade away by Chambers. The quarter ended with my man, Katad, hitting a nice one before the buzzer. Remember that name, Katad. Then my man, Katad, and Woolworths went at it on mad finger rolls and jumpers in the lanes and bombs from deep corner and dunks galore by Woolworths. 14 points in two minutes, end to end, hoop to end. Tied at 38, 20 remaining in the second period. Here is Woolridge with a pretty crossover move. He, he just, he's going to make Tom Chambers play. Hey, he's got three fouls. There's nothing he can do. Woolridge with 17 points. And Bologna by two. Here's Katash. Tough angle from the corner. <laughs> he's fun to watch. It stayed close for the rest of the half. Any with Bologna score 58. Tel Aviv score 57. Big half from my man Orlando Woolridge for Bologna. He had 21. And off the bench, my main man, Katash, pumped in 12 points for Tel Aviv. Because he was so nice in the first half, Katar started the second half instead of coming off the bench. Then superstar Komachek started to get his flow on, scoring on some nasty three-point plays and jumpers in the paint. Tel Aviv's big man, Bellini, started a fast break with a rejection in the hole, which led to another Orlando Woolridge dunk. And on and on they went. Ten seconds in the third. Plenty of time to set something up for Goodis. Five seconds. Good as sees an opening. Gets past Paul DeBello. Oh, Flings it back. Kent. They get it in. He'll Got get it, it in. That it counts. counts. It only has to be released out of his hand before the shot clock goes off. Bradley Leaf underneath. And they caught Bologna napping. Komachek still catching Rex. Scoring his 27 points to start the final period. Then the threes range. Bologna first. Tel Aviv next. Stopped by Benelli, out to Goodis for three. A three-point <laughs> extravaganza. With 6.56 left, Tel Aviv's Tom Chamber committed his sixth foul. See ya! He's out of there, out of the game. Then O came back to life, breaking open the game with a crazy, mad, two-hand, hop-for-life dunk that gave Bologna a 12-point lead. Baby, baby, Bologna's finished. Tel Aviv off with style, and Woolridge and Komachek letting them know what's going on, looking for an NBA contract. Komachek finished the game with 33 points, 19 in the second half. Orlando, 30 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists. Bologna took it away, 112 to 103. change our game for anybody. One, two, three, jump! <laughs> hey, what if we can beat Houston as well? Let's take it one step at a time. Let's beat for two, let's beat for three.
I live for this. This is me. This is what I do. <laughs> energy that we play today with. We got to go out there in a frenzy, okay? Hit these guys with something. Everybody's out there showboating, and, you know, and they think this is prime time. They're in the NBA. This is the NBA dream. We want to kick their asses right on this court with the type of energy they've never seen before. You got to play the game of your lives. It's the game of your lives, guys. Now listen up. You are on Showtime. A lot of you guys have never been in this situation, okay? You never know the future, guys. Make it by bus tomorrow. The first age of telecommunication allowed us to communicate, but only with words. Now, we're entering a new age of communication in which telephones will transmit words and pictures, making the wonders of the world visible to everyone, everywhere. Every child will be able to read every book. Can you hear me, love? Doctors and teachers Definitely. will share their knowledge with everyone who needs them. A large them. bore needle into the chest, below the clavicle, beneath the third rib. Is that supposed to be me? And every conversation will take place face to face. You got a kiss for your daddy. And I to <laughs> I. Enjoy an evening with the pretenders on the Isle of View. It's their new album and includes all their greatest hits performed acoustically. The Pretenders, The Isle of View. All over Britain, homeowners have less up top than they should have. He's got less up top, believe it or not, so has he. And he's had nothing worthwhile up top for years. He, on the other hand, has just topped up with new, easier-to-handle Super Wrap Pink. Because to meet today's energy efficiency standards, loft insulation needs to be around 200 millimeters thick. So, if you think you're insulated against losing heat and wasting money, think again. Think pink. Think Super Wrap Pink from Owens Corning. Tales of the Black Horse. Morning, Posty. The Unfounded Fear. <laughs> Good boy, Scorch. Oh. Bill. 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 And the bank mm. would like to see us. Now then, Mr. and Mrs. Hoover. I see from our records that you're overdrawn <laughs> to the tune of one group. Should I deal them down, Master? Go ahead, Mongo. Fortunately, the Lloyds Bank manager merely wished to invite them to a service review. It's a chance for our new customers to tell us if there's any more that we can do to help. <sighs> Scorcher. We'll shift some of your standing orders so they come after payday. Left-handed, eh? Perhaps you'd like one of our left-handed checkbooks. Scorcher. Yeah. Not to worry. <laughs> I'll put one in the post. The service review. Another legendary service from Lloyds Bank.
the waiting's over. The Sheffield Sharks versus Real Madrid. Can the Sharks overturn Madrid and face Bologna tomorrow? It's game time, baby. And we are underway, game number two. And that's right away, you see what's going to happen with the ball on Real Madrid. They're going to Real Madrid.